This interview is being recorded. It uh, may be used in evidence if your case is brought before a court of law. Can you please state your name? Paul F. Taylor. Right, Mr. Taylor. You are currently under caution. You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your case if you do not mention something when questioned that you later rely on in court. Do you understand? It wasn't me. I didn't... Do you understand? Yeah. Yeah. Look at this mess. Six bodies, further three in hospital, unable to talk. I'm trying to figure out how this could happen at a comedy gig. Now, I would like to be tucked up in bed at a reasonable hour tonight, so um, in your own words, why don't you tell me what happened? OK, so I was in the King's Head and I was doing some jokes. <laughs> So when she's finished, you're on, Paul. OK? Yeah, sure. Right. Have you actually written anything this time? Yeah. <laughs> OK. Just haven't got an ending. Are you going to watch me this time? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, I bet go. OK. This is going to be so much fun. Sit back, relax, enjoy yourselves now, but put your hands together and please welcome to the stage Paul! My name's Paul, um, a great name, unless you're in a clay pigeon shooting range. <laughs> and it's like, Paul, don't shoot! <laughs> OK, good, good, good. Uh, thanks for coming down here. Thanks for coming down here to the King's Head, where there's pillars. Sorry about the pillars. Oh, got pillars. Sorry about that. It's annoying, isn't it, when you go to see something and there's pillars in the way, isn't it? Oh, God, oh, it's an... Like I went to go and see the Greek Acropolis. <laughs> <laughs> couldn't see it, couldn't see it, yeah, yeah. It is the, oh, it is the pillars, right, right, OK. <laughs> uh, this is going to be good, I think, you know, and I think your own point of view is important. Uh, like the other day, I thought I was just a guy lazing in a hammock. Turns out I'm a dickhead who ruined a game of beach volleyball, so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry guys, sorry, I was just lying in it. Yeah, 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 have your ball back. <laughs> so, um, uh, how do we, uh, what are we normally doing comedy? Hey, are we going to couples in? Hmm? We're going to couples in? Hmm? Hmm? We're going to couples in? Hmm? <laughs> couples? No. <laughs> we're going to we got couples in? Yeah, yeah, love the couples, love them. Come on in, couples, that's what I always say. Get in here, couples, two seeds, couple time. Ooh, do you know who we want in these two seeds? A couple. Mmm. Yeah, we love couples. Come on in, couples. Come on in. Two seats for couples. Come on. Come on, couples. Come on. Joy, we need two people. They're next together. Couples. Two seats. Come on, couples. Come on, couples. Come on in, couples. Single. We don't want the singles. No, no, we only we only want the couples. We, it's still going. We only want the couples. We only want the. We're three. Can we come in? Get out three. Or one of you leave and leave a couple. Cause we just want couples. We just want couples. We only want the couples. <laughs> That's uh, my impersonation of Noah. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, the applause has come in early today. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> hey guys, uh, I'm going to admit something. The other day, I bought some oven gloves, and um, yeah, and uh, and it turns out my oven doesn't have hands. So, <laughs> so uh, I'm wearing them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty good for puppetry. Don't know if we've got any puppetry fans in. They're pretty good for that. Look at that. There's a whale there. Hey, how you doing, guys? I'm a whale. <laughs> OK, and uh, it's not the only one I do. It's not the only one I do. Check this one out. Look, beached whale, beached whale. Ooh, I'm not so happy. Oh, it's a sad day today. Ooh, that's, uh, that's a cactus. Um, that's a beached cactus. Um, One-armed ghost. <laughs> 
that's as far as I got with that. Uh, so uh, I've kept the receipt for them. Yeah, I've kept the receipt. Yeah, I can I can take them back if I want. Yeah, and they'll go. Why are you returning these oven gloves? And I'll go. Ooh, they weren't funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I reckon probably the worst thing about driving a time machine is that your kids are in the back going, "Are we then yet? Are we then yet?" <laughs> So we've effectively started, um, <laughs> that's what's happened. We have begun, and uh, it is hard knowing how to start doing this. It really is, you know, uh, like, uh, it, it, there are other jobs that are easier to start in, like auctioneers, they know what they're doing, right? What they'll do is they'll have like a plinth, right? And they'll have like an object on it, like a, a Toby jug, right? And what they'll do is they'll come out and they'll go, ooh, they'll, they'll start high. What they'll do is they'll go, do we hear 200 pounds for that? And everyone will go, no, because you're never going to pay 200 pounds for that piece of shit. So what they do, right, is they go, down and they build up, they go down, they go, oh, uh, 10 pounds over there, we're all going, what's going to drive? Oh, 20 pounds over there, back in, 30 pounds over there, oh, 60 pounds over there. They build up, you know? I can't do that as a comedian. I can't come out here and go, do I hear a standing ovation? <laughs> oh, bit of a laugh from that man there. That's a good bit. That's a good bit. Oh, man at the back there, he's gone in against you. It's a rival bit. Oh, he's this man's coming in here. He's coming in here. He's got him with a really big bit there. Are we going to. Oh, he's coming back in. It's going to even bigger laugh. Are we going to get to the standing ovation? Oh, it's going once. Are we going to get the standing ovation? It's going twice. Are we going to get the standing ovation? It's going three times. Are we going to get the standing ovation? He's going to go four times. He's going to the standing ovation. He's going to go five times. Are we going to get the standing ovation? He's going to go six times. Are we going to go standing ovation? It's going to be seven times. He's going to be standing ovation. He's going to be eight times. Just fucking do the standing ovation. <laughs> All right. One person cheering. All right. Uh, you know, the best way to get a standing ovation is to not give your audience chairs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, love couples. Love them. Get out singles. I do not want the sing. I only want the couples. I don't want the singles, I only want couples here. My act is a lot like that middle aisle that you get in Lidl and Aldi, you know? There's a lot of weird shit in it. <laughs> you know? uh, <laughs> my advice is have a browse, you know? You might see something you like, you know? Like a solar-powered rock. Or a gilet. <laughs> Multicolored swimming noodles, yeah, we need them! We never go swimming, oh, okay. Ooh, this pastor's got Russian writing. <laughs> <laughs> wow, is that a real product or is it just a link to your next bit of material? Let's see. <laughs> so Russia, um, I've got a bit of a problem with Russia at the moment. I think we all have. They're there on their computers, aren't they? Hack, 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 <laughs> Naughty Russia. And they, they invaded Crimea, that's what they did. They took Crimea. Oh, naughty Russia. They, took, they, they increased their land mass. They, said, they annexed Crimea. That's what they said. They annexed Crimea. Obviously, they needed somewhere to put uh, their grannies. And uh, <laughs> they annexed Crimea. They expanded their land mass. But Russia, if you look at it on a map, I looked at it on a map, it's quite a small name, isn't it? R-U-S-S-I-A, Russia. And spread out in big letters all the way across Russia, which is a big fucking country. They have to spread it out in big letters all the way across. I don't think you should be expanding your borders until you've got a name that fits the size of your country. That's my point. Like, the Democratic Republic of Congo have to put DR Congo. <laughs> Dr. Congo. <laughs> That sounds like a horrible racist stereotype, doesn't it? Hello, I'm Dr. Congo. <laughs> Who is coming to my practice today? It's me, Papa New Guinea. Oh. <laughs> Hello, Papa New Guinea. Why are you here? I've got a bad knee. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, look, here is my son, Chad. Hey, man, I'm Chad. <laughs> you got any medical marijuana? No. <laughs> Only on bongo. <laughs> We always prescribe on bongo, it's just what we do. It's a bit of an odd reference, but some still get it. <laughs> so, hey, I'm hungry, you should eat more. I'm, ch <laughs> I'm chilly, you should wear a jumper. <laughs> hey, I, I, I'm Katie Price. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> you meant Jordan, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. Yeah, I may have to cut that one. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> can't even play it. Don't know why I asked for it. Um, <laughs> see, Russia's got a really big landmass, right? But it's got quite a small name, right? Russia, isn't it? It's like quite small and it's spread out all the way across it. Whereas if you think of the Vatican City, it's annoying when you fuck something up, isn't it? Don't you think? No, you like that. Right, OK. <laughs> I always look back at things. I've done. Like, uh, six months ago, I had a bit of money, right? And I always look back at me with a bit of money and go, hey, you had some money and I'm poor now. Why didn't you save the money? And me, six months ago, I was going, yeah, I got loads of money. What am I going to do? Buy a monkey suit. Yeah. I'll get a monkey suit and I'll dress up in it. It'll be really fun. I might even put it in a show. <laughs> You're not going to do that. I know. <laughs> uh, I've just spent all your money. You idiot. I need money now in the present day. And I'm going to Italy next month. You to learn it Italian. Oh, well, that's not my fault. You need to speak to you three months ago. Hey, I'm you three months ago. I haven't learned Italian either. Yeah, I've just been playing in the monkey suit. <laughs> Sorry about that. This is fucking ridiculous. Why don't you learn Italian? Then you'd know Italian in the future. I can't. I'm doing the gig. I'm kind of busy right now, you fucking idiots. Hello, I'm you 40 years in the future. Mm, buongiorno. Ciao. Oh, my God. I've learned Italian in the future. No, I just learned those two phrases. <laughs> just to fuck with you. A bit of a prankster the future, me. Yeah, yeah. Why have you only got one arm? Oh, you need to speak to you six months in the future. Hey, I'm you six months in the future, just using this circular saw. Hopefully nothing goes wrong. Hey, me six months in the future, it's me in the present day. Ah, you idiot! You cut my arm off! Oh, dear, that went bad. Hey, I'm you ten minutes before you went on stage here today. I've got a really good idea for a bit where you play lots of yous in different time zones. I think it's going to be fucking hilarious. <laughs> hey, I'm you ten minutes after you've been on stage. What the fuck were you thinking? <laughs> that bit was ridiculous. You just kept popping up as different time zones. You didn't even have an ending. Hello, it's me 40 years in the future again. Why are you do what are you doing back there? That's the past. Oh, I've got a time machine and I came back. Yes, we're not then yet. We're not then yet. No, I'm in a time machine. And and I'm going to cross this bit out so it never happened. There we go in your notepad. There we go. It'll never happen now. Good idea. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> what I liked about that applause the, was the uh, reluctance. Buongiorno, 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 ciao, bella, bella, bella. <laughs> Italian impersonation. Yeah, yeah. How do you do it, Paul? How do you do that? How do you do that, Paul? Buongiorno, ciao, ciao, bella, bella, bella. Yeah? I just say buongiorno, ciao quite a few times, and I do that with my hand. Yeah? That's how you do Italian. Mwah, yeah, oh, I'm Italian. <laughs> Why do Italian people do that? Well, they used to have a sock puppet that died. <laughs> Yeah, and they're like, I'm here, so you sock a puppet. Come back to me. Give you the kiss of my life. Oh, come back to me, sock a puppet. Why did you die? Before Italian people had the sock puppet that was dead like that, they used to talk like this. Hello, I'm from Italy. <laughs> oh, are you? I'm from Italy too. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and, uh, my brother got lost in the wash. Yeah, that happens. <laughs> <laughs> Italian people love socks. That's why their country is shaped like a leg. <laughs> Whereas if you think of the Vatican City, that's a really, like, they can't fit it in Vatican City. They have to write on Italy into an hour. <laughs> so I, uh, I flew recently, went uh, to Italy, uh, ahead of that bit, and I, I, always, I always enjoy it on the flight. Well, oh, we all love flights, don't we? They're good fun, aren't they? You know, because you always get on it, don't you? And then you see your, your seat as you're going down the aisle, and you see your seat there, and then you sit in it, right? And I, I sat in my seat last, last flight I did. The guy turned to me instantly when I sat down and went, oh, I'm not a good flyer. And I went, mate, none of us are good flyers. That's why we're on the plane. <laughs> <laughs> that, doesn't, that doesn't work. We took off. The guy next to me fell asleep straight away, you know, and then I needed a wee. You know, and it's always embarrassing, isn't it, having to wake someone up to go, excuse me, I need a wee wee, you know. <laughs> excuse me, I need a, you're an adult, and you're going, excuse me, I need a wee wee. It's really embarrassing, isn't it? Especially when you realise you're in the aisle seat and you didn't need to wake them up. <laughs> you're like, I just think you need to know that I need a wee. <laughs> 
I always take hand luggage when I'm on a flight, and I always feel smug because all I've got is hand luggage. Yeah. And you see all the other people with their fuck off massive bags, aren't they? They've got two big bags, and they're there at the weighing scales, and they're going, oh God, I've got two bags here, put the first one on the scales. 15 kilograms, it's a 20 kilogram limit. Oh no, I'm going to have to pay. And then I go past them with my hand luggage going, check me out. I'm the hand luggage guy. Just got this little trolley bag. Hey, out of my way, ladies. I'm the hand luggage guy. Hand luggage guy. Ooh, I'm going to security. I'm going to take a little plastic bag and put in my 100 milliliter or less bottles. Mm-hmm. Straight through security. Hand luggage guy. And they're there with their bags going, damn it. Why has he gone straight through? And I'm going, hand luggage guy. Hand luggage guy. I've just got my hand luggage. I don't always sing, but I, uh, <laughs> and then you get on your flight, don't you? And they're sat there going, oh God, I hope my bags are on the hold of this flight and not, not on the hold of another flight because my bags have got my anus medication in and uh, I really need my anus medication. And I'm next to them going, <laughs> I've only got hand luggage. My anus medication is right up there in the overhead compartment. Oh yeah, I'm the hand luggage guy, hand luggage guy, hand <laughs> luggage guy. <laughs> And then you land at the airport and they're there at the carousel going, mm, is this my bag? No, it's not my bag. It's black. It looks like my bag, but it's not my bag. Is this my bag? No, it's not my bag. It's black. It looks like my bag, but it's not my bag. Is that my bag? No, it's not my bag. It's a black bag. It's not got the bow on it that I always put on it. And I'm there going, I don't even know why I'm waiting here. <laughs> I've got my hand luggage right here. Ooh, I'm the hand luggage guy. I get on the carousel and start dancing. Hand luggage. Woo. It's the hand luggage guy. Got anything to declare? One thing. What is it? Hand luggage guy coming through. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's the hand luggage guy. <laughs> then you get to your hotel, you open your bag, and you realize you've only packed gloves. <laughs> and then you're there going, oh, I'm the hand luggage guy. Oh, shit. And then you're at the swimming pool and you're wearing a pair of gloves with swimming trunks. <laughs> I'm the hand luggage guy. I'm the hand luggage guy. Well, the shaft goes in the thumb. <laughs> and then the back bits in the other fingers. <laughs> Are those your kids? <laughs> I'm the hand luggage guy. What I don't understand is... Have you touched my gloves? Those gloves? Uh, no. All right, I looked at them for a bit. They didn't fit. But you know, my missus got angry the other day because I used one of the posh glasses to trap a spider. <laughs> yeah, my argument was, he's a guest. <laughs> She, she wasn't having it, though. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> I saw a man the other day with a tattoo of a spider's web on his face. I have never walked through a spider's web gone... <laughs> I want that forever! <laughs> How can it be so? Get a tattoo. OK. <laughs> My missus, uh, she has a different strategy when spiders come in, right? She, um, one came in the house the other day, right? Came in and went... Doo -doo 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 -doo. It ran across a piano. <laughs> <laughs> And she trapped it, she trapped it with a cup. And I was like, what are you doing? You don't trap it with a cup, do you? You trap it with a glass. And you watch him do his little mime act inside. You don't trap him with a cup, do you? And then she went away to get a piece of paper to slide under the cup. So when she was gone, getting a piece of paper, what I did is I got two other cups that looked exactly the same, right? And I put them on either side. Yeah, and when she came back, we had a good old game of cups and spiders, yeah. <laughs> Oh, is he under this one? No. Is he under this? He's not under that one either. He's not under that one. Where the fuck is he? Ah! <laughs> I can understand it if I had a tattoo of a web. <laughs> People always have uh, tattoos of spider's webs on their faces. You know, I've never walked through a spider's web gone, <laughs> I won that forever. You know, but... <laughs> you reading your phone? 
My favourite insect of all. Mm, wow, you're, yeah, which one is your favourite, Paul? Tell us. Well, I'll tell you. Uh, ants. Yeah, I love them. They're very British, aren't they? They seem very British. You know? uh, they've got a lot of things in common with us Brits. You know? they, uh, they like queuing, don't they? Yeah. They like jam um, and picnics. And they've got a queen. Virtually British, aren't they? I think uh, the ant is actually short for Anthony. Yeah? And then they're going, I love a queue, don't you, Anthony? Oh, I love a queue too, Anthony. Oh, I, I, I hope there's some food at the end of this queue. I hope it's a, it's a picnic. Yes, I hope it's a picnic too. Oh, hold on. Who's that insect pushing in front of us? That's not cricket. You're right. It's not cricket. It's grasshopper. Yes. <laughs> they look very similar. Yes, yes. I think that joke's missed some people. Yes, I know. <laughs> Well, anyway, so who's ahead of us in the queue? Well, I thought it was lots of insects, but it turns out it's just one caterpillar going all the way to the front of the queue, all the way to the picnic. Excuse me, caterpillar, is there anyone else ahead of you in the queue? <laughs> Pardon? I said, caterpillar, is there anyone else ahead of you in the queue? <laughs> Are you aware you're talking to my anus? Oh, sorry, caterpillar, your head's there. Yes, um, what have you been eating in the picnic? Well, on my first day, I ate one apple. <laughs> And the second day, I had two pairs, and, uh, and uh, this is my story. <laughs> uh, get a hungry cat. Okay. Um, I just want to check that they get the joke. Now, uh, no, it's, uh, it's annoying when other people tell stories. You know, hungry caterpillar, it's all right. You know, but when, when, when I'm talking about when people tell you stories, sometimes it's boring, eh? And sometimes when people tell you a story, they talk about a friend of theirs that you don't know, and they refer to them by name. You know, I was talking to my friend the other day. He said, "Oh, I was at Paul. You'll love this. You'll love this, Paul. I was in Tesco's the other day, and John said, and I was like, who's John?" Like, who the hell is John? Like, who are these people that are bringing up people in their stories that I don't know? I'm mean, referring to them by name. Like, who are these people that bring up people I don't know in their story? Who does that? Like, like, if you had a book and you were reading it and halfway through a character called John popped up with absolutely no character development, you'd be like, oh, what the fuck is this? <laughs> Throw it out the window. Who published that? That's the shittest book ever. Who are these people that are bringing up people I don't know? <laughs> Do you know who does that? Ian. <laughs> Classic Ian. <laughs> you don't know Ian? <laughs> I uh, often get a train to gigs, and I like get in the train. Um, uh, but uh, the problem with when you get the train is the, the, the risk, isn't there? Because uh, often you're on the train, aren't you, enjoying it, going, well, this is an efficient way to go from point A to point B. And they'll stop the train, won't they? And a guy will get on and go, hey, we're replacing this with a bus. And, uh, and you go, no, <laughs> no thanks, I'll stay on the train, thank you very much, uh, I enjoy the train. And they're like, no, 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 we're going to replace this with a bus. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a replacement, is it? If anything, it is a substitution. And a shit one at that, isn't it? You wouldn't want to live with someone who works for the rail companies, would you? You know, you know you'd come in through the front door, they'd be sat in the lounge. You come in and go, hey, mate, how you doing? And they go, oh, yeah, pretty good. Oh, um, by the way, I used your cheese up, uh, but don't worry, I replaced it. And you'd go to the fridge, wouldn't you? You'd open the door, you'd look in there, and there'd be a bus in there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Do you replace everything with buses? Yeah. <laughs> That's what we learn at the rail company. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't want to be a kid in a high chair waiting to get fed by someone who works for the rail company, would you? You'd be sat there, mouth open, ah, feed me, daddy. And they come in with a spoon, open wide. Here comes the choo choo train. Choo choo, choo choo, choo. Oh, it's broken down. <laughs> But never mind, we're going to replace it with a bus. Yeah, and the bus is going to go all the way over here. <laughs> yeah, the opposite direction to your mouth, yeah. <laughs> it's weird, that. We, it's going to stop there for a bit. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> and then we're going to change driver. Yeah, honey, come and feed the kid. <laughs> Screw you, kid. <laughs> <laughs> That joke doesn't really work in Germany. Um, over there it's like, hey, you know when you're on the train and you get to your destination? <laughs> it's 
slight difference there. I don't know if you noticed it. But uh, so often I drive to gigs. I'll drive, and uh, there's risk when you drive as well, because often when you drive, the police will stop you, won't they? And they always ask the same thing whenever the police stop you. They always go, um, while well, they go, woo, to stop you. <laughs> they go, woo. OK, right. <laughs> they don't always do that. It's, uh, anyway, <laughs> they go, woo and then they stop you, right? And then they always ask you the same question. They go, do you know why I stopped you? Which I think they ask because they want you to admit to another thing, you know, other than the reason why they stopped you, so they can get you on two things. So whenever a police officer stops me and goes, do you know why I stopped you? I always say, is it because I slept with your wife? <laughs> and, and they always go, no, no, it's because you're black. What? <laughs> I'm not black. Oh, sorry, I'm new to the police. Um, <laughs> haven't got the old institutional racism thing yet. <sighs> I've checked, you're allowed to laugh at that one. <laughs> so I've talked to the audience, right, and they're all in front of me, right, but at certain points throughout it, I'm just looking directly to the camera like this, and I start talking directly to the camera because it draws the audience in. <sighs> I need a break. I'm gonna get a coffee. Oh, did you want one? Yes. Then start telling me the truth. Oh, fuck! Uh, but uh, look, guys, uh, one little tip from me to you when watching this show, have a drink, have a drink. That's, uh, that's a little tip from me to you. Have a drink, have a drink, have a drink. That's the mime for having a drink, isn't it? It's not a very good mime, is it? Like, if you had a drink and you did that, you'd be like, oh, I tipped it down my front. <laughs> it's a shit mime, isn't it? I think a lot of the mimes that we're taught are shit. If we had a mime tutor, we'd have cause for complaint. You know, we'd be able to ring them up and go, excuse me, mime tutor, I got a complaint about this mime for a telephone you taught me. It's not very good, is it? No one tends to hold a phone like this, does it? Looks like I'm picking my teeth when I got my thumb in my ear. It's a pretty ridiculous mime. Well, I think it's a very good mime. If you've got a, a problem with it, why don't you just email me? You can email me. Well, that's not a very good mime for emailing. It looks like you're massaging a child's uh, shampoo into their hair. That's, that's, that's not a very good, well, I, okay, well then fine, I'll drive over to your house. I'll drive, well, that's not a very good mime for driving. That looks like you're milking Milking a cow, if anything. Oh, yes, it does look like I'm milking a cow. Yes, 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 yes. Hold on, are you mime driving and mime talking on the phone at the same time? Yes, I am mime driving and mime talking on the phone at the same time. Oh, you should be careful, you'll get stopped by the mime police. Hello! <laughs> Woo! I'm, I'm, uh, I'm the mime police. Uh, yes, do you know why I stopped you? Is it because I mime slept with your wife? What? No, that's not the mime for mime sleeping with my wife. That's the mime for went skiing with my wife. Oh, yes, I went skiing with your wife. Yes, yes. Why have you stopped me? Oh, it's because you're mime talking on your phone and mime driving at the same time, so I'm going to mime write you a ticket. Oh, that's not the mime for mime writing a ticket. That's the mime for can I have the bill in the restaurant? Hello? <laughs> Do you want the bill in this restaurant? No, I'm writing him a mime ticket for mime driving his car and mime talking on the phone at the same time. What are you holding there? Is that a tray of drinks? No, no, shop pot. Yeah, same mime. <laughs> Look at that, same mime. I always have a shop pot in here. Hey, who put this shop pot in my mime plate of food? You mime motherfuckers, I was gonna mime eat that. Is everything okay with your meal? Why are you playing darts in here? I always play darts in here. One of those darts playing waiters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These waiters are all weird in here. That, that old cocktail waiter over there doesn't seem to like me. <laughs> Hey, everyone get down on the ground. I'm taking this whole restaurant hostage. What, with that cigarette? God damn these mimes. <laughs> so kind and insistent. Well, it sounds busy down there, mime tutor. <laughs> I, think, I think I might leave you to it. No, no, no. I'll put you on mime speakerphone. Beep. You know, and then we can all talk to you like this. Oh, this is mime speakerphone. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's not very good, is it? No. <laughs> Oh, not a big fan of berets. <laughs> <laughs> not many people are wearing berets these days, are they? Not many people wearing them. Quite uh, small groups that wear berets. Um, you know, it's only really two distinct groups. Um, mime artists, they're wearing the berets, aren't they? Yeah. And then in the middle, no one at all. No one at all wearing a beret. No one at all. And then on this side, military. That's it. That's the two groups that wear berries, mime or military, silent or violent. Those are the two <laughs> groups. Yeah, you know, it makes you think. Maybe the hat tells them which one to do, you know, or something like, you know, they put, it's like the choosing hat in Harry Potter. You know, they put it on and they, they go, oh, I want to be in Slytherin. I'm afraid you're in the military. Oh, no. You know, 
Or maybe there's a switch in the hat. Maybe that's it, that switches them between mime or military, you know? But you've got to make sure you've got your hat on the right setting. Oh, yeah. You don't want to be on the front line of a battle going... <laughs> and a guy will come up and go, ooh, are you miming a gun there? Because um, they're actually using rounds over on that side. <laughs> Yeah, have you thought that maybe um, your, ber your beret might be set to mime artist? Oh, it is set to mime artist. How did you know that? You're just a hunter. Well, my deer stalker's set to mystery solver. <laughs> <laughs> I've been solving a lot of these mysteries lately. Yeah, yeah, like this guy over here. Hey, I keep breaking into safes when I'm a doctor. Yeah, it turns out his stethoscope was set to bank robber. <laughs> It's true, it was, it was. Hey, I'm an auctioneer, but I keep sentencing people to death. See, his gavel was set to, to judgment. Uh, I always, I, 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 I'm not very good at clothes, you know? I always spill food down my front when I'm eating, you know? And you always look a mess when you spill food, you spill food down your front, don't you? Unless you're eating pasta bow ties. <laughs> yeah. Then, if anything, you look smarter. Yeah, yeah. People come up and go, ooh, full bow ties. You go to a formal event? No, just can't eat. <laughs> Are those chocolate buttons? Yeah, 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 yeah. I was eating them and they fell down my front and I started out. Yeah, yeah. Why have you got a bag of chocolate buttons in your jacket? Well, they're spares. <laughs> <laughs> Don't like untying my shoelaces? You yeah. know? This is too far away. Look at it, it's all the way down there. I can't be asked. You know, it's hard. I'll just sleep in my shoes. I have to tell myself to untie my shoelaces. You know? uh, now, recently, what I've been doing is telling myself um, that it's a present. You know? And then I'm like, oh, because it's like a present, isn't it? When you undo it, you're like, ooh, what's it going to be? What's it going to be? Oh, socks again. <laughs> <laughs> you got to be careful what you wear. And I'll tell you why. Because whatever you wear when you die, you will wear the remainder of your time as a ghost. Every film I've ever seen where there's ghosts in it, whatever you wear when you die, you wear the remainder of your time as a ghost, which makes you think, you know that guy that's like a ghost that's just a sheet? <laughs> How did he die? <laughs> Was he changing his bedding and he got stuck? It's like, there's no way out! Ah, I'm dead. <laughs> Should've cut a little hole. Yeah, I'm dead. <laughs> I'm dead. I can still talk, but I'm dead. <laughs> 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 Clothes are tough, like uh, especially when you when you place like here, like Crouch End, Crouch End. You know, often you'll see a person walking along and they'll have their jumper over their shoulders like this. Hello, we've all seen it. Hello, yes, I've got my jumper over my shoulders like this. Yes, looks like they're giving their jumper a piggyback, is what it looked like. <laughs> it? Or maybe they're giving a friend a piggyback and they went round the corner too quickly. <laughs> And they're like, Steve, you're really light today. <laughs> Steve! <laughs> I lost him. <laughs> uh, uh, fashion is hard. It's far, like uh, w William Shakespeare. He always had a thing, circular thing around his neck, didn't he? Called a ruff, which we always thought he wore for fashion. Uh, but it turns out he had stitches in his leg and he kept gnawing at him. <laughs> It's like, woe is thou! Oh, I want to know them! Oh, what strictness is this? That's, I can't do it. <laughs> I tried. There is a saying, isn't there, that an infinite number of monkeys on an infinite number of typewriters will eventually create the works of William Shakespeare, which is great, amazing. But imagine being the guy who has to proofread all the versions the monkeys came up with. <laughs> That'd be a shit job, wouldn't it? You'd have this whole office and there'd be loads of monkeys in a big line and you go and go, right, okay, uh, monkey number one, what have you come up with? <laughs> okay, this is just 600 pages of the letter O. Yeah, I was reading it out, I was reading it out. <laughs> okay, well, that's not the great works of William Shakespeare. Beer. Can I have a banana? Yes, okay, here you go, have a banana. Well, that's the first monkey, he hasn't come up with anything. Let's move on to monkey number two. What's your name? My name's Peanut, the name is Gibbon. <laughs> well, it's meant to be an infinite number of monkeys. What are you doing here? Well, there isn't an infinite number of monkeys in the world, so they had to call in backup. <laughs> mm, I don't want to be here. <laughs> They've got writer's block. <laughs> we don't know it's a race on a safe race. Well, they say if you throw enough shit at the wall, eventually some of it sticks. All the other monkeys have done that. 
stinks in here. Can I have a banana? No, I'm afraid I gave the banana to the last guy. You have an infinite number of monkeys and you only brought one banana. <laughs> well, he's a bit sad. Let's move on to monkey number three. Hello, what's your name? Oh, my name is Caesar and I'm a gorilla. And here you go. The company works on William Shakespeare. Wow, you did it. The company works on William Shakespeare. This is exactly it. Well done. Except Romeo throws shit at Juliet. But William, you know, it's, a, it's basically the same thing. Well done. Thank you very much. I wonder if I could submit some of my own material <laughs> rather than just replicating things that other people do, you know. It's just like my band, you know, in my band we just do covers. <laughs> oh yeah, what's your band called? Uh, uh, the Monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> we do covers of mostly the Beatles. <laughs> 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 okay. Um, <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> uh, it's annoying, isn't it, clothing? Because, like, you're going... To, it's most annoying when you go to a nightclub, isn't it? And then you get there, you've got a big jacket on. What they'll do, right, is they'll have a cloakroom. Yeah. Cloakroom. Cloak. Room. <laughs> Who the fuck is turning up now with a cloak <laughs> to a nightclub? That's an old-time gent, isn't it? Turning up going, good morrow! Art thou the keeper of the cloaks? I'm Tina, I work here. Very well, Tina. Here's my cloak, my snuff box, and my pistol. <laughs> Tell me, what monetary value do you require to keep hold of my effects? It's a quid. Very well, here's a guinea. <laughs> now tell me, where does a gentleman such as I go to find fair maidens in this tiger tiger? <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, they always give you a raffle ticket, I've noticed that the, uh, they always give you a raffle ticket in the cloakroom, which I think is quite apt because it is often like a raffle as to whether or not you're going to get your jacket back at the end of the night. You're like, have I won my jacket? No, I'm afraid you're like, okay, cool. Shouldn't have risked it. Yeah. What I do now is I, uh, when I put stuff in the cloakroom, I put things in that you actually might win in a raffle. <laughs> you know? Then at the end of the night, everyone's there going, I got my jacket, I got my jacket. Oh yeah, well I got a hamper, a bottle of wine, and two tickets to cats. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm winning cloakrooms, boy. <laughs> now you go in a nightclub and you can't hear anything. I'm getting too old to be in them, because you can't hear it. All it is is like, and you can see people are talking to you because their mouth's moving, they're going... And you're like, what? I don't know what you're saying. So you just say, yes, because it's so loud. So you start using your hands to communicate, don't you? Yeah, you use your hands to communicate. And uh, men and women, yeah, men and women are different, aren't they? Hmm? They use their hands very differently. Men tend to use these two fingers when they're communicating, whereas women tend to use these three fingers. Uh, men are always, ooh, where's my drink, mate? Over there, mate, cheers, mate. <laughs> Where's the exit? Over there, mate. Cheers, mate. <laughs> Where's my thumb? There it is, mate. Cheers, mate. Whereas women tend to be, fuck you, I'm married, you've got a little dick. <laughs> uh, that's my most accessible bit of material. <laughs> Fingers are weird, aren't they? You know, like they've all got their own message when they stick up on their own. Like your thumb, when he's up on his own, he's like, hey, everything's cool. Hey, I'm the thumbs of fingers. Hey, everything's cool, I'm the thumb. Hey, I like things on Facebook. Hey. <laughs> your first finger, he's really useful. He's, he likes pointing. He's like, oh, look over there, look over there. I'm really useful when he's up on his own. Your middle finger, when he's up on his own, he's like, you lot. Uh, oh, they look angry. I better, I'll go back down. I'll go back down. They look angry. Your fourth finger, when he's up on his own, he's like, hey, I'm the fourth finger. Hey, I'm the fifth finger. Why are you standing fifth finger? Well, they always stand when you stand fourth finger. Well, if you could sit back down, please, fifth finger. OK, I'll sit back down. Hey, I'm sitting back down. Why am I sitting back down? You always sit back down when I sit back down, fourth finger. That's just the way it works. Hey, I'm the sixth finger. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm a fish finger. Can I be in this bit? <laughs> no. <laughs> we don't eat jellyfish, do we? No. Sounds like something we should, doesn't it? You eat jelly, yum, yum, yum. You eat fish, yum, yum. But jellyfish, no. <laughs> I think the main reason we don't eat jellyfish is because we don't know what to have it with. Do you have it with chips or ice cream? <laughs> no one knows. What aisle would you put it in? No one knows. Fish, fish section or the desserts? Who knows? <laughs> I find cooking hard. 
You watch on TV, it's so easy for everyone, isn't it? You know, like Nigella Lawson and Jamie Oliver and Gordon fucking Ramsay, they're always there going, hey, I'm, hey guys at home, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, hey, do you know what we're doing today? We're gonna grind in some unicorn horn. Mm, yeah, we've always got unicorn horn in, let's just grind that in there. In it goes. Do you know what I'm putting in next? Dodo eggs. Yeah, I've always got dodo eggs in. Let's put them in there. Oh, here's one I made earlier. You know, they never struggle like we do. You, you never see Nigella Lawson halfway through a recipe suddenly realizing she doesn't have a pestle of mortar. <laughs> she has to get a rock and a bowl. <laughs> oh no, this is embarrassing. The cameras are on. Oh no. You never see Jamie Oliver halfway through cooking something having to get a tea towel and waft it in front of the smoke alarm. <laughs> He's burnt his Kievs, do you? You never see Gordon Ramsay halfway through cooking something, trying to open his cutlery drawer, and he can't because the whisker's gone up against the edge. <laughs> <laughs> and he's going, the whisk! God damn you, the whisk! Like the whisker's taking your whole cutlery drawer hostage. And he's in there with a knife at the fork's neck, going, I'll beat everything in this drawer! You know, and I'm outside with a funnel at my mouth like it's a megaphone Go, just release the tin opener! Release the tin opener! He's there going, no, I'm a whisk on the edge, I've got demands. All right, what are your demands? I want eggs. <laughs> you never buy eggs anymore, and I want eggs, and I want a bigger draw, one that a Japanese businessman might sleep in, and, uh, and a fast car, and uh, we don't negotiate with terror whisks. Ooh. <laughs> They applauded that, but I thought that was a horrendous pun. <laughs> Shut up, Whisk. You pun officiado. <laughs> I'm gonna beat you. <laughs> You're an inanimate object. Uh, yeah, I remember. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it called cutlery? Only some of it cuts. It should be called cutlery, prodlery, and scooplery. <laughs> Some things sound really good when you say they're homemade and some things sound really bad. Like if you go to someone, hey buddy, do you have some of my homemade jam? They'll go, yes, I'll have two jars of your homemade jam. But if you go to someone, hey buddy, do you want to have a go in my homemade helicopter? <laughs> no. I'm worried about safety. Don't be, I got homemade parachutes too. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You gotta be healthy when you eat as well. You gotta be healthy in life. People always say to you, you should run. You should run, don't they? Oh, you should run. I don't wanna run. I don't wanna, uh, you know, I don't want people to say you should run to me, which is why now I always carry scissors. <laughs> and then people go, don't run. And if you do, <laughs> don't run with them, you'll hurt yourself. So when you run, insects always fly in your mouth, don't they? And you're like, stay out of my mouth, butterfly. You look pretty, you do not taste pretty. <laughs> the other day I was running, thought I'd swallow a butterfly, turned out to be a moth. Tasted exactly the same. <laughs> Which is why I think moths should be called, I can't believe it's not a butterfly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm the whisk. I didn't like that punny ending there. I'm going to beat you. You're inanimate. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I uh, try to be healthy, try to, when you, when you, when you, when you, years ago, the way to be healthy used to just be, drink orange juice, you'll be fine. Orange juice, yum, 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 you'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, and I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I like orange juice, but I don't like the cartons. Yeah, because the cartons are always telling me what to do. Like I bought this orange juice the other day, it said best before, first of November. Ooh, I drank it on the second of November. It was fine. I survived. So shut up, orange juice. Don't you go telling me when and when not to drink you. I think I know what I'm doing. I think they should put some advice down the side of orange juice I didn't know, something that might help me. Perhaps up down the side, orange juice, best before toothpaste. <laughs> <laughs> it's disgusting after toothpaste, isn't it? Yeah, they're going, oh God, it's like licking a battery, why? <laughs> Hey, if you ever have trouble opening your bottle of champagne, my advice, hit it with a ship. <laughs> <laughs> Little short one there. Sometimes you'll be in a Chinese restaurant, won't you? And there'll be a statue of a cat knocking like that. And uh, that reminds us of before we had cat flaps. <laughs> Do you remember when your cat would be there going, can I come in please? It's cold. <laughs> 
I don't like light bulbs, because they look like the ghosts of dead pears. <laughs> <laughs> Went in a light shop the other day. It wasn't a light shop, it was a haunted greengrocer's. <laughs> It's a weird time at the moment, isn't it? Like, uh, we've got uh, Weinstein um, touching everyone. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a tough time. I think there's a lot of weird men who've got weird behavior that need to stop, <laughs> you know? Like, I went to the, I was walking to the train station the other day, walking to the train station and went past the building site. There were some builders up on some scaffolding at the building site, and uh, a woman came walking the opposite direction to me, and they wolf whistled her. They went, wolf whistle, <laughs> And uh, I thought, what are you doing? Like, it's 2017, why are you wolf-whistling ladies? What is going on? Like, the only way we're gonna stop men wolf-whistling ladies, I think, is to start releasing wolves into the public. <laughs> right? What happened is, they'll wolf-whistle, right? And then they'll look down, shitload of fucking wolves down there. I can't get down from my scaffolding. Or, what'll happen is, is a woman will walk past, they'll wolf-whistle her, and she'll turn around and go, hey, do you wanna go out sometime? And they'll go, yeah. Oh my God, the wolf-whistle's worked. That's never worked before, but let's go out. And then they'll go for a meal, right? And they'll be sat opposite each other, and she'll be like, hey, hey, do you wanna come back to my place for some coffee? And he'll go, yeah, I do wanna go to your place for coffee, amazing. And then they'll go back to her place, right? And she'll go, hey, I'm just gonna go in the bedroom and slip into something more comfortable. And he'll go, ooh, I'll follow you in, right? And then he'll go in the bedroom and he'll look at her and go, ooh, what big teeth you've got. Because <laughs> she'll be a wolf. <laughs> and the next day she'll go down to his building site and huff and puff and blow it all down. Because she'll be a wolf. <laughs> and he's a pig. <laughs> He's a sexist little pig. <laughs> You're right, you can just hand clap that twice if you like. <laughs> Pigs have a corkscrew shaped penis. What? Did you know that? Did you know that? That pigs have a corkscrew shaped penis? Fucking amazing. It's great, isn't it? When you're on the farm with an unopened bottle of wine. <laughs> And they're going, I really want to get into this Merlot, and a pig will turn up. Hello! <laughs> you want to drink that Merlot? Yes, I'd love to if I could. Well, place it on the floor. Okay, now spin me. Wee! 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 There you go! Wow, you're amazing. They should call you a pork screw. Yeah, that's a good name. <laughs> or a swine opener. Oh, yeah, also good. <laughs> You got any tin cans that need opening? Yeah, I got this one here. Okay. Wee, wee, wee. Here you go, tin can. Wow, you're amazing. How did you do that, pig? I'm a Swiss Army pig. <laughs> I have many settings. I got corkscrew, I got tin opener, I got nail file, I got that's a magnifying glass. <laughs> oh, no. oh, that's a toothpick. <laughs> <laughs> Don't eat me. <laughs> That's what it feels like. They're trying to evolve so we won't eat them. But we will eat them. We'll eat pigs. We love eating pigs. We love it. And we feel guilty about it. I know we feel guilty, because whenever you see a dead pig, he's always got an apple in his mouth, hasn't he? Like we've gone, oh no, we didn't kill him. No, we choked on an apple. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Can we still eat him, though? I love animals. I'm an animal file. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a word? I, uh, <laughs> I, have, I have pets a lot, like cat cats are an interesting pet. They're an interesting one to have because the thing with cats is people always ask cats questions that no one gives a shit about the answer to, don't they? They always go, oh, did you have a good day, cat? Did you enjoy your dinner? Do you like it when your daddy rubs you on your belly? Who gives a shit about the answer to any of those questions? Why can't we ask cats questions I do want to know the answer to? Like, hey, cat, where do your legs go when you sit down? <laughs> And the cats are going, well, I've got retractable claws and legs, right? They all go in like this, right? And then I'm Welsh, of course, right? <laughs> As the, all cats are, right? Now you, you step on my head, my tail goes in like a hoover. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Actually, I got a question for you while I'm by you. You know that flap you put in the door? I appreciate that, thanks for that. I don't have to knock anymore. But uh, what's the flap for above the horizontal one? Oh, um, that's the letterbox cat. Oh, right, I thought it was for another animal, you know, like a stingray. <laughs> He's gonna catch it and eat it. Thought it was a new pet of yours, the old pet stingray. 
Cats. Cats always think they're a lot faster than they actually are. They always go, meow. <laughs> uh, you haven't fucking moved anyway, cat. You just sat there. No, I'm, uh, you're right, I haven't moved. I uh, had hamsters quite a lot when I was a kid, like a hamster. And, oh, hold on. Oh, it's good, but it'll be on the film. <laughs> um. <laughs> then someone started talking during the show And Paul didn't like it so He made it awkward <laughs> During the show, it fucks it up. <laughs> when you talk during the show, it fucks it up. <laughs> I've been working on the shit for too many years. Don't fuck it up. <laughs> <laughs> Dogs are good, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, thanks. No, just talk, but just do it silently. Um, <laughs> women are like, fuck you, I'm married, you've got a little dick. Because <laughs> the, the thing of it now. How are your shitty jokes relevant to this? Tell me what happened! Well, I am, I am telling you. It's, there's just a lot to get through. <laughs> I, uh, I had hamsters when I was a kid, they were good. And they're always surrounded by um, like, uh, sawdust, aren't they, hamsters? And you're always like, why are you surrounded by... It's because they've been doing woodwork, that's what it is. Yeah, yeah. You hear them on their little wheel, you think they're on a wheel. They're not, they're on a lathe. <laughs> Sometimes you look in the hamster cage and go, is that a desk in there? No, no, no. Are you wearing clogs? <laughs> <laughs> I saw a hamster, where? They're on the stair. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I like dogs. Dogs are great. Dogs look like their owners. That's what people say, and it's true. Dogs look, do look like their owners. Like the other day, I was talking to my friend. I said, hey, dogs look like their owners. And he said, oh, roo, 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 roo. <laughs> I went, oh, sorry. I thought you were someone else, mate. <laughs> they smell disease, too. The dogs smell disease, which is amazing, isn't it? Dogs smell disease? Wow. They can tell you if you've got a disease, but uh, they have no way of communicating with us, do they? You know, imagine how pissed off you'd be if you found out you had heart disease and your dog hadn't told you. You'd be livid. You'd be there going, you son of a bitch, I feed you every single day. Why didn't you, why didn't you tell me I got heart disease? Well, of course I'm a son of a bitch, I'm a dog. Yeah, good point, but you should have told me I got heart disease. Well, I've got no way of communicating with you, you know? Right, maybe we should have come up with a code, like one bark for yes, two barks for no, three barks for you've got heart disease. Yeah, that would have been quite good. Oh my God, you tell me I got heart disease again? No, the postman's here. <laughs> He's got heart disease, we're all trying to tell him. That's what we've been doing all this time. Actually, I've got a question for you as a dog. Hold on, I'm just gonna sit down. I've got a question for you as a dog to a human. Question for you as a dog to a human. Um, who is a good boy? <laughs> you keep asking me and I, I don't know. <laughs> Pets are great. Pets are an animal that your parents buy for you to teach you about death. It's true, that's what they do, they, they buy your pet to teach you about death. Uh, it's like they go, we'll get this right, we'll watch it die, and then when grandma goes, it won't be so sad. <laughs> and there's two types of parents in this regard. There's the first kind of parent who when they've got their hamster, kid with the hamster, right, they see him by the cage crying, because they're going, oh, mommy, my hamster's cold and he's not moving, I don't know what's the matter with him. And they go, well, maybe in the morning he'll be okay, Timmy. And then in the morning he's there going, hey, mommy, my hamster's alive. He's a different color, but he's alive. <laughs> That's the first kind of uh, own, uh, parent, right? And there's a second kind of parent who when they see the kid crying by the hamster cage, they go, what's the matter, Timmy? Mommy, it's my hamster, he's cold and he's not moving. Well, maybe in the morning he'll be okay. And then in the morning, there's a bus in there. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you worked for the rail companies, mum? Oh, it's a long time. Standard practice. 
I want to be one of those comedians who can do callbacks, you know? Callbacks are great. Callbacks are the way you refer back to something you've said earlier on, but they're, they're really hard to write. Like I was telling my friend the other day, I said, hey, callbacks are hard to write. And he said, oh, roo, 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 roo. <laughs> I went, oh, you again. <laughs> The questions we ask cats are always uh, the questions that no one gives a shit about the answer to. You know, you always go, hey, cat, uh, how was your dinner? You know, <laughs> how was your day been? I, uh, I have trouble with technology. I really do. I have real trouble with it. I don't know how to, I don't know. How many passwords have you got to remember now to live in society? It's like 30, 30 fucking passwords. I can't do it. Like, do you remember when you were a kid, the only password you ever had to remember was the password to get past a bully into a den. <laughs> that was it. You go up and you go, can I come in the treehouse? And they go, what's the password? And you go, poo poo. And they go, yes. <laughs> come on in. That was it. Imagine being a kid now. You'd be there going, can I come in the treehouse, please? Yeah, what's the password? Poo poo. No, that's not it. But you've got two more attempts. OK. Uh, poo poo too. No, that's not it. You've got one more attempt. Um, password? No, that's not it. And you're locked out of the treehouse. You can never come in again. Oh, can I reset it? Regrettably, yes. <laughs> But first, you must tell me what your mother's maiden name is. OK. Um, Mum, what's your maiden name? Mum, Jones. Jo it's Jones. It's Jones. OK. Now tell me, what's this word I'm spelling? I'm spelling a word out. Right. And if you can tell me what this word is, then you can come in there. It looks like you're spelling treehouse. It is treehouse, yes. And is that a river? What, the river behind the treehouse? Yes, is that a river? <laughs> yes, it's a river. Ooh. <laughs> One last test. Ah, uh, are you a robot? <laughs> no. You've passed! <laughs> we have a no robot rule at this treehouse. So I've sent you a new password over to another treehouse over there. Go and get it. OK, I'll go and get it. Hey, you should come in our treehouse. What's your treehouse? All your friends are here. Yeah, but what is it? LinkedIn. Fuck off. <laughs> so I don't know what the fuck that thing is. <laughs> well, I've got a new password. Can I come in, please? You're going to have to set a new password. OK, poo poo. No, you can't have one you've had in the last 28 days. Um, uh, poo poo too. No. No, it's not strong enough. Ah, comedian backwards. <laughs> Shit, that's your password. <laughs> come on in. You've come into the treehouse. This treehouse is amazing. <laughs> Who made it? It was me, the hamster. <laughs> it was up all night. There was sawdust everywhere. <laughs> You see what I was doing? I was doing a little multi-character act out thing there. I was playing lots of different characters. I like to do that. It's a thing I do. I'll, uh, I'll play different characters. And there's certain rules to doing it, guys. There's certain rules. The first rule is you've got to turn and face the other character like this. What? Like this? Yeah, like this. You mean I can't turn and face the other way? Like this? No, because then that looks like we're in a queue. You know? Or maybe I'm spooning you. Oh, it doesn't like you're spooning me. That's nice. What if you turn and face the other way? Well, now it looks like we're in a jewel. You know? Or maybe we're measuring each other for height. Oh, we're the exact same height. Yeah. Yes, we are the exact same height. Well, what are the, some of the other rules of multi-character act out? Well, it helps if the other character has a different voice or accent. Ooh, ooh, well, that is. Mm, yes, if you like. I mean, it's a bit strange, but go with it. Oh, it's a character I'm developing. He speaks like a lead. <laughs> what are some of the other rules of a multi-character act out? Well, don't have too many characters in your scene. Oh, what a shame. I brought my friend with me, the man from the cloakroom earlier on. Good morrow. <laughs> Saw you two back to back. Thought you might be having a duel. Thought I could officiate. No, I'm just um, explaining to him the rules of a multi-character act out. One of them is actually don't have too many characters. So it's quite ironic that you've turned up. Oh, too too many characters, you say? What a pity, I've brought along with me my friend, the cat. All right, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Meow, we know your stationary cat, shut up. Oh, all right, I brought my friends with me, two ants. Hey, I'm Anthony, Hi, I'm Anthony. Are we in a queue here? No, I'm just explaining the rules of a multi-character actor. We're not in the queue. Oh, oh, okay, I hope there's some jam at the end of it. No, I've already said it's not a queue. It's not a queue. Well, then who's that ahead of you over there? Some kind of insect or something. <laughs> Pardon? Well, you a fucking caterpillar. <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> I'm a butterfly. And you know where I want to fly? In your fucking mouth. No! Get out! I can't believe it's not butterfly. I can't believe 
is not <laughs> my uh, woo! That's right, it's me, a police officer. <laughs> Do you know why I've turned up? Um, is it because we've got too many characters in this scene? Mm, yeah, that's right. Mm, I'm going to punish you. Mm, I'm going to punish you. Uh, why is a police officer dancing like that? Mm, I'm going to punish you. Oh, um, I think his uh, police hat might be set to stripper. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes, it is <laughs> set to stripper. <laughs> yes. Well, it's getting very cramped in here, isn't it? It's very cramped in here. Mm, yes. <laughs> this is the ending that I wanted. I've been writing this whole ending the entire time. <laughs> I am a gorilla, and this, this is my doing. <laughs> 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 Ending. <laughs> Shit ending. <laughs> Fuck's sake. <sighs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've got to the end. Yeah, I didn't like the ending. It's fucking shit. Why did you write it like that? I don't, oh, you're here. <laughs> What, 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 are you, what are you doing here? I didn't like the ending of the show. So you paid a gorilla to write your show? Yeah. I was fed up of writing. I wanted to apply the Infinite Monkeys theorem to comedy. How did the gorilla even get to the gig? I don't know. He got an Uber? I will not set you free. Why don't you just fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Keep me in here. I'm not safe out there. I wouldn't worry about that, sir. So, uh, whether or not your statement is true, which I seriously doubt, we've still got a breach of the Animal Welfare Act 2006, uh, not forgetting six counts of involuntary manslaughter due to criminal negligence. I want to see my lawyer. Interview terminated at 11.50 p.m. When Paul F. Taylor and Caesar, a Western lowland gorilla, met over 20 years ago, no one would have predicted that they would become friends for life. Caesar? He's playful. He loves me. He does love me. He does love me. I mean, I'm not qualified in any way whatsoever to say that he loves me, to know for fact. <laughs> yeah, he really does love me. In the long history of human-animal relationships, their story is one of the most fascinating. It is the true story of a young man and a gentle giant 
walking hand in hand into a whole world of understanding. What the? Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Ah! I brushed him up. <laughs> Who is that? Who is that? Gorilla. Caesar has learnt over 1,000 complex sign language signs, meaning interspecies communication can exist in a way we previously only dreamed of. Right. Second word, yep. Um, locomotion? Uh, uh, train. You have killed three minky whales. Green piece have caught you. Um, they live in the ocean. Um, you've got to go back three places. Caesar, I saw that you changed the food to creme brulee. We don't have creme brulee. We have a lot of we have a lot of bananas. No, no, I'm afraid we've got a lot of we get bananas in feet. What would oh, right. ah, Okay, no no Oh no I love you I love I love you Okay, okay, okay. Well, how about ah, okay what would you like to eat? What would what 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 would you like to eat? The cat? You can't eat the cat. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? No, don't, no. Caesar, don't do that. No, Caesar. Ah, oh, fuck's sake. We talked about that. You, that's right in my eye. Put, put that down. These cost money, you fucking hairy fuck. One of the most interesting things about their relationship is that Caesar is clearly quite strong and humans are surprisingly weak and fragile. Oh, 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 oh. oh fuck. That genuinely hurts. Oh. Ah, Caesar! Oh. Ah. Ah. Okay. Ah. Ah. Okay. Okay. Caesar, why don't you draw the cat? Draw the cat. Okay. Caesar and Paul are best Caesar. friends, showing that Draw despite clear differences in intelligence, our two species truly can get along with one another. Caesar, can I have a beer? They couldn't have known that their friendship would change century-old stereotypes and change forever our outlook of both gorillas and humans. Uh, can I have bottle opener? Caesar. That's one of his jokes, he's put a banana on there. <laughs> uh, gorillas. Wanna catch? Okay, now back to me. Back to me. Have you got everything you need for this documentary? One thing that is very clear is that Paul F. Taylor is an example of a stupid human and gorillas will, in no doubt in the future, rule the world. Yeah, it's a wrap. It's a wrap. Oh, there you go. It's a wrap. Okay. All right. Where do I get paid? <laughs>